Hi, I'm Tom Edwards, and welcome to the Apple Worldwide Developer Conference 2018 Recap. So for this year's WWDC, there were a number of kind of key macro trends. Everything from Apple's focus on democratization of coding through Swift. You saw the rise of what's called immersive design. It's the shift towards focusing on augmented reality and essentially the connection of physical and digital. You also saw advancements in terms of Siri and the ability to drive personalization within the voice assistant. And this kind of leads into a bit of the proxy web, one of the constructs I talk quite a bit about. And then the end point is really going to be around the role that in emojis, as well as some of the shifts in FaceTime will potentially have with Generation Z. So let's jump into it. All right. So Opening up the keynote, Tim Cook really talked about the customer being at the center of everything. And this really came through in terms of a number of key territories that were discussed. Everything from democratization of creation of tools from their coding initiatives, all the way through to the focus on privacy um, towards the end in terms of their efforts to eliminate fingerprinting across devices, etc. But one of the core things that really came through was really about the experience. And that was really started through iOS 12 and some of the updates that are coming this fall. As you jump into iOS 12, the immediately out of the gate really focused on performance and speed. And not only for the new devices that are potentially coming, but they also focused on even older, older phones. So the iPhone 6 Plus, for example, they were talking about faster launch speeds in terms of the apps, uh, app launch, faster keyboard display, faster access to the camera, etc. But moving, why all this focus on performance and speed? Well, as we shift into Apple's focus around augmented reality, Apple claims that it's the largest augmented reality platform in existence. So there's a significant amount of focus around AR and the role that it's going to play within, the, within iOS 12. So as we look at how is this going to become pervasive and just uh, just part of the everyday experience? Apple, in partnership with Pixar, actually rolled out what's called USDZ. This is an open file format. It basically allows for the optimized sharing of AR experiences across everything, from files to Safari to messages and mail. This is a really big deal because it allows portability of AR experiences. One of the other big announcements that actually came on stage was one of the uh, Apple partners in terms of Adobe actually launched USDZ support in Creative Cloud. So essentially there are going to be tools, you know, Creative Cloud obviously has Photoshop and a number of other kind of key creative tools that are used to create traditional creative elements. Now you can get into immersive design via Creative Cloud. So this is going to kind of change the way in which we can begin to design some of these experiences, make sure that they're portable. And this is actually going to have a significant impact when we think about the role AR is going to play in terms of kind of the consumer decision journey and just in everyday life. As you begin to get into some of the advancements that were rolled out today with AR Kit 2, and AR Kit again, it's the platform that basically allows developers to, to integrate uh, augmented reality uh, into the Apple ecosystem. So there are a couple key points here. The first being that you can now have persistent AR experiences that are tied to a specific location. Object detection and image tracking to make AR apps even more dynamic is now made available. And Apple also unveiled the Measure app for iOS. This basically allows you to use AR to quickly gauge the size of real world objects. And there was a great demonstration on stage when they actually showed how to connect an e-commerce experience, so shopping for a guitar. They actually showed how you could go from the specific website for the product and open it up via AR and actually see the size in real time. So it was just a very interesting way to connect physical and digital. One of the other big announcements that came out of ARKit 2 was actually the integration of shared experiences. And this was a big move. What this basically allows for is for multiple people, whether it's those actually interacting with the augmented reality experiences or a third party observer to kind of watch what's happening. What you see on screen here, this was actually a video that was showing a, a, a man and a woman playing a block based game and kind of trying to knock over blocks with balls. 
But this again, this now opens up this possibility for this integration of shared experiences. And that's incredibly key, especially when you get into Gen Z and the hour and a half a day that's spent uh, in terms of gaming as well. So one of the other things that actually caught my mind, it may have seemed like a, a minor announcement, but this really ties into a larger discussion we'll have around Siri. So they rolled out new search and search suggestions and categorization of photos. So they're basically adding indexing, there's contacts, time, photos associated with those events. As we get to the point to where it's going to be more about systems and proxies that understand us, that understand context, that can then take and categorize our external world through either computer vision or through machine learning and basically then be able to understand context. We're beginning to see the, the framework being laid within the on the operating system level that's going to allow for that level of understanding. Because you already have a, a significant amount of machine learning that's actually happening on the individual device from kind of a processing perspective. Now, as there's this shift towards categorization of information and data, this was one thing that definitely caught my eye on the operating system level that's going to lead towards even more predictive types of, of personalization experiences on the actual device. Now, here's where we get to Siri. So a lot of what I've talked about over the past year, year and a half, is this idea of the proxy web to where we as individuals will continue to offload more and more responsibilities onto virtual assistants. For Gen Z, that's going to be about managing personal time. For millennials, it's going to be about um, replenishment type purchases. For Gen X, it's about financial services. That's all comes from, from research that I've conducted over the past year. Now, Siri receives around 10 million requests per month. And what shortcuts actually are, it basically, think of it as an action into Siri. So you can assign your own phrase and you can basically say that and associate that um, with whatever the experience is going to be. And this is kind of a baby step towards this idea of the proxy web. So you can essentially now within an application integrate add to Siri, as you can see on the screen. So the example that was given is that there's an upcoming trip that's actually being planned. And what you'll actually then be able to do is add your own personalized query so that you could essentially then call up specific examples. So you could say something like travel plans. And then once travel plans is actually stated, it pulls up the reservation and all the information specifically tied to travel plans to where you immediately have that information at your fingertips instead of having to go through, like I've done multiple times, search through emails, search through you know, different, um, different trip applications to try to find the right information once I'm on the ground. The other aspect to this, which is incredibly interesting, is this allows for more personalization of Siri. And one of the key things when it comes to adoption of technology the more that you can democratize access and creativity and flexibility, that's really what helps to drive adoption. You think about what really drove the explosion of smartphones over the course of the last 10 years. It was really the App Store. So the App Store allowed for personalization of the experience. But now, as you can see, moving it forward, Shortcuts is, a, is an operating system level um, way in which now individuals can take and interact with Siri, control those experiences, and begin to build what we call scene design. Basically where it's going to be less and less about going to a specific application. It's going to be more about your virtual assistant on the operating system level that's going to be able to then stitch together different elements. So you can actually go back through and you can uh, look in a gallery, set up your own new shortcuts, and basically design scenes that fit with your life. So it's less about going into an individual application and more about that application and the technology adapting to you. Now, one of the biggest, one of the biggest announcements that occurred during WWDC was not necessarily USDZ or some of the announcements to Siri. Oh no. It was tongue detection for Animoji. <laughs> All kidding aside, we did receive four new Animoji between the ghost, koala, tiger, and T-Rex there. But what was actually even more interesting was the rollout of Memojis. So any of you who went on Snap know about Bitmojis, but Memojis essentially have the look and feel of, of Apple emojis, and it allows you to customize those experiences. Now, just like with the AR experiences, there was a heavy focus on making sure that Memojis and Animojis were portable across different types of experiences. 
So essentially creating these, sharing them easily via mess iMessage, um, that was another kind of key area. And even coming up in terms of integration with FaceTime. So that was actually a really key and interesting uh, development that came about as well. So now, as you can see on screen, you see this, uh, the example of the Memoji, you know, trying to map to the, the dog with the hat, and obviously the video gets sent through. Now, when it comes to FaceTime, this was one of the bigger announcements. FaceTime now supports up to 32 concurrently connected users. Why is this important? For Gen Z, FaceTime is absolutely essential. The camera has evolved so much to the point, it's not just about capture with Gen Z, it's actually now about communication. And Apple is definitely capitalizing on this. So what they actually did is they created a kind of a unique experience to where it's got multiple levels of tiles, and you can also scroll through at the bottom to have up to 32 individuals. As those individuals begin to speak, you can definitely see how the, the tiles begin to shift and take different shapes as it goes through. But group chat has been uh, just a, a huge area of growth over the last few years. Everything from house party, um, and now you're flipping into you know FaceTime supporting not only multiple groups, but also now the integration of augmented reality filters here as well. So you'll see in just a moment that uh, Tim Cook will pop up um, into, there we go. Now you see there's a tiger face, you see there's a unicorn and emoji there. Um, it's the integration of the Memoji. So again, it's this blending of augmented reality in addition to kind of the group time communication with the idea of getting even more and more um, adoption of these specific tools. Now, some of the stats from Snap basically said, you know, right now there are about 80 million people that leverage and use um, augmented reality filters. Pretty soon that's gonna be up to 120 million. And as the hardware continues to advance, as the sophistication and ability to, you know, to drive um, image and facial tracking um, and overlays here, as you can kind of see, and then ultimately deliver this through either the browser, and now Apple's basically trying to deliver augmented reality solutions just throughout all of the iOS experiences, you can definitely see we're shifting towards a time where it's less about branded content, and it's gonna be more about enabling creation through immersive design. So again, that was one of the, the really big um, key consistent themes that I saw during WWDC. All right, that's it. As usual, I talk about uh, all facets of emerging technology through the eCare 3 framework. That's empower, technology that empowers. Um, Exponential is all about artificial intelligence, enhances the connection between physical and digital. So I am Tom Edwards. And if you have any questions, you can obviously email me, but thank you very much and have a great day.